Hey everybody, today I have to show you another leaf wire creation and this is a really cool one. It's the most compact one hour adjustable dropper hopper clock. The volume of this clock is only 30 blocks, but nevertheless you can get a delay of up to 62 minutes between two signals in case you completely fill up this dropper here with items. I'm just having eight in there so we get a shorter delay. Now the clock works like this. At the bottom we have a clock that powers this dropper and tries to transfer the items over to the hopper via the chest. But the hopper transfers the items back into the dropper. Now the clock at the bottom is just slightly faster than the hopper can transfer items. The hopper can transfer items every 8 ticks and at the bottom we have a 7.5 game tick clock. I'm gonna explain this one a bit later. But now let's try it out. We just have 8 items in there, but you can see still gonna take quite a while until we transfer the items over. So basically pushing the items back and forth and it's gonna take a while until the dropper is completely empty. So now we're at four, sometimes three, and it's actually gonna take a while. Most of the items are now in the chest here. Once we reach zero items, we push over the observer and break up the clock and then the hopper can transfer the items back. All right, any moment. Okay, now the clock got disabled. Now the hopper transfers the items back and we restart the clock now. You can also turn off the clock by just activating this lever here again, or to be precise, just powering the block below. And then this would also stop the little clock at the bottom. There's a bit of a cooldown, you need to wait until all the items trickle back into the dropper in case you want to start it again and expect the same amount of delay. Good thing about the clock is, if you take an output here from this comparator, for example add a monostable, you get an initial signal if you turn the clock on. You can see here this turns on and then you get the next pulse up to 62 minutes later. So the design is based on the dropper hopper clock, which was first shown by Peter Jiang. So this design here, it's a bit smaller, but it doesn't have yeah, quite the duration like this one here. Would be cool if you could agree on calling the dropper hopper clock the Peter Jiang clock, similar to the ESO clock, but I don't think it's gonna happen because Peter is a very talented redstoner, but unfortunately doesn't have quite the audience that ESO has. The clue of the system is the 7.5 game tick clock at the bottom. So the premise of the system is to have a clock that is slower than 8 game ticks, but as close as possible to 8 game ticks. I've shown a similar design already for 1.12, where I used a 6 or a 7 game tick clock, but we couldn't reach quite the amount of delay um, like with this design here, where we have the 7.5 game tick clock. Now obviously you can't really make a seven and a half game tick clock, um, but this clock here basically acts like a seven and a half game tick clock since you get a signal every six and nine game ticks. So basically two signals in 15 game ticks, um, which means one signal every seven and a half game ticks on average. So over there I built up another version, just want to show you that we indeed get a signal every six or every nine game tick. So if I turn this on, get a command block output here. So basically this command block here adds one to the counter every tick. And here we take an output from this observer. And as you can see here, between two pulses, we either have two, four, six, eight, nine, nine ticks of delay or six ticks of delay. Always alter alternates. So this is indeed a, yeah, a pseudo seven and a half game tick clock. You can also easily rearrange the clock design. So here we have the leaf clock at the bottom, but in the same amount of space, you can also fit the leaf clock at the top. And here is an horizontal design, uh, which also would work the same. All right, so in case you're interested in building this, it should be quite easy to follow. So since it's one wide tileable, um, the only interesting part is that we use a sticky piston here at the bottom. And also this is a sticky piston here next to the lever 
Instead of a node block, you could also use a powered rail or an activator rail, as if you prefer that. But node block is also fine. The leaf type doesn't matter, and the dropper is facing into the chest. I think this should should be it. Here is pretty much the same. Here we have to use a door. If you would try to put a block here instead. So I tried first, do it like this somehow. Then unfortunately it doesn't work because by powering this block we also power the sticky piston here. So that's why I had to use the door. Alright. And here's the horizontal design. So again, to compare this here, take the output of the observer and I'll just have the leaf clock right here. Again, sticky piston here, normal piston there. And three leaf blocks, sticky piston, observer pointing into the piston and one detecting the leaves. And here just use a dropper. All right, as you can see here, this one also works fine. Takes a while until you get the signal. And in case you fill it up completely, then you only get a signal um, at the output with the comparator next to the hopper every 62 minutes.